I did come out to the world, so to speak. It was very like beautiful, flamboyant, and like I'm here and I'm so proud. Two days after that article posted, I had about 2,000 emails wow. from closeted athletes. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced as LGBTQIA plus athletes? To exist, yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Tom Daly. And this is Towel Talk. Where I'll be meeting Adidas athletes and allies to show that the locker room is a place of camaraderie where everyone feels welcome. A safe place to discuss, improve and recharge. Let's meet our lineup. I'm Leisha Clarendon. And I play for the Los Angeles Sparks. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm playing from the Stonewall FC team in London, and I'm in the women and binary team. My name is Hudson Taylor. I'm the founder and executive director of Athlete Ally. Now, before we get started, I want to find out a little bit more about you. So, let's see what's inside your lockers. Now, before I see what is in everyone else's locker, I feel like it's only fair that I show you what's inside mine. And okay. this is a little canvas that my son made. How old was your kid when they made this? He's five, mm. and he wanted to make these little heart balloons because he said that when I'm far away, that the balloons could like fly to me. The next thing that I always have with me is my knitting. Wherever I go, I always bring it. It was my way of being able to sit down, switch off. It's almost like my mindfulness as well. Like I'm able to like everything just quiets down. Then we have my chamois, which is something that every diver has. And of course, it's got the rainbow Shocking. moment going. And I absolutely could not dive without this because when we're spinning around, when we're wet, it can be very slippery. With the G-force you experience when you're spinning around, you want to be able to hold onto your legs and pull in. So it keeps you warm and also allows you not to slip out of your dives. The next thing that I'm about to show you the mystery jar. is the it's hair grease. Well, I wish it was hair grease. <laughs> this is my wax. Basically, you rub it on your hands and then you rub it on your legs so that when you grab onto your legs, you can pull in really tight Hi. and you're not going to slip. It's really sticky. Oh my God. You warm it up in your hands and you rub okay. it all together. It allows you to oh. keep grip. That's my little locker assortment. <laughs> I love it. I feel like I started my baby. Yeah. This picture was probably a point in my career where I remember that workout pretty vividly and just like training and a grueling point in the off season where you're like kind of by yourself and you just have to like push through. It's mm -hmm. like the stuff that's not glamorous. So for me, that picture reminds me of like myself and how far I've come and how hard I've worked. And then too, having my child there to like witness me and bring joy in that moment. It's very special to have that. And what else did so you bring? So that's my mushy one. These two kind of go together. This is like one of my protein powders I love. This is like a tart cherry juice. I usually mix them together post-working out okay. to get the best amount of recovery. Mm -hmm. So these are always in my locker as soon as I'm off the court. Yeah. And then the last thing I brought is my wedding ring. Oh. So I'm always wearing it. Like I make a joke with my wife, like I'm married to the game, like to basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but then also, just like my partner's always with me. Like she's yeah. my anchor person in this world. And no matter what's happening, like I have that. All right, Joe. can you tell us what is inside your locker? Yes, of course. My brown beanie, my favorite one. Really used, as you can see. Yeah. Um, I think that I had it on my first friendly game and I won, I was a top scorer. And from that time on, I think I just kept it as my lucky charm. And what else did you bring? Uh, photo of my partner, some years oh. ago. We are in a decent relationship, so I don't get to see her as much. Oh. So it's important for me to have a mini photo of her. I was very long distance at the beginning with my husband as well. Having those pictures which is close to you. It's special. It's fine, yeah. So what is this colorful piece of kit? Yeah. This is the Stonewall jersey. Stonewall is uh, a team that I joined three years ago. It's the first um, queer uh, team of London. So in the team, we do play uh, a mixture of uh, women on binary and trans people. And this jersey is really valuable for all of us. What do you think wearing that jersey means to you? Like when you put it on, is it like your superhero moment? It is a superhero moment, but also <laughs> I feel really proud of uh, what we give to the community and uh, I feel really proud when I see my friends being really happy uh, of all of us being together in the team and playing football, all of us together. I mean, it's so special to hear yes, that, yeah. the, the message of inclusivity when it comes to sport, yeah. because you know, sport really should be a place for everyone to feel exactly. like they, they have yes. their place. It's amazing. I'll have to come and watch uh, yes, a match the next time yes. I'm in London. <laughs> 
Now, Hudson, what do you have in your locker for us today? I have a couple things. This very special headgear. My life kind of changed because of this sticker. I was a three-time All-American in college, but I was a theater major, so I was in two very different worlds. Kind of got to this place where I realized that my team was more homophobic and sexist, and my sport was less welcoming than it ought to be. And so my senior year, I decided to wear this sticker to show my support as an ally to the community. Got in a lot of heated debates with my teammates. One of my coaches just pulled me aside and said, you know, Hudson, would you be willing to do an interview about why you wear the sticker? I didn't know it at the time, but he was closeted. So he was there wow. kind of hearing me have this fight with my teammates. But then I did this interview and about two days after that article posted, I opened up my inbox and I had about 2000 emails wow. from closeted athletes from across the country. It kind of just blew me away. A two second choice could make a really big impact. That was really the genesis of me wanting to start a nonprofit, Athlete Ally. It's kind of founded on this belief that there's never been a successful social justice movement for a minority group without the support of the majority. Just goes to show how important visibility is because it creates those conversations and those spaces to feel like you can talk openly about who you are. I feel like that's so special. And it's an amazing message, so thank you. And I see there's a couple of other interesting yeah, bits that you got so here. Yeah, so this is a novice wrestling trophy, a third place. A lot of times what makes somebody a champion is not how they handle success, but how they handle defeat. Mm -hmm. And it's what you do with those losses that allows you to become the best version of yourself. Oh, well, as, as someone with three bronze medals, you know, third, <coughs> I'm sorry, third is so bad. <laughs> that is so bad. But, but like, that's the drive, right? That's yeah. like what keeps you showing yeah. up. And then I see this, and I'm quite intrigued by this. This is a deck of cards. So I started wrestling when I was five, and for me, it was always really important to have that balance. And a deck of cards was the way that I could like not get completely consumed by the anxiety of having to compete. We're gonna go freshen up and then we'll be back in a bit. So while I have us all together, I'd love to have a little bit of a huddle and talk about some of our experiences in sport. Now my first question, do you think being LGBTQIA plus impacts people when they want to first start getting into sport. For me, getting into basketball was a really safe space because I could dress masculine, like the clothes fit well. I could kind of hide from my parents, especially when you're a girl, you can wear more baggy clothes. But then the other way, I think it can go the opposite. Some sports get stereotyped or like yeah. hyper feminine sports. I think it does kind of depend on the sport too and the culture around that sport. It speaks a lot to yeah. some of the gender expectations. And what do you think as an ally, like do you see young athletes like getting into sport, like they are they fearful? Yeah, I think what we've seen is, uh, I think it's something like 23% of LGBTQ youth participate in sport. Over 80% are not out to their coaches or teammates. And LGBTQ youth drop out of, of sport at twice the rate of their heterosexual cisgender counterparts. So I view culture as being very contingent on the people in the room. I think that you can have a really hostile environment in what might be perceived as a inclusive, progressive sport. But if you have the right teammates, the right captains, the right coaches who are actually showing up for each other, speaking out as allies, some of those barriers can be done away with. And what are some of the biggest challenges you faced as LGBTQIA plus athletes? To exist. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. To be visible, yeah. I would say, yeah. And to prove all the time that you're good enough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On that note, I know we had like quite a deep and you know insightful conversation there, but I've got a little bit of a game, and you know I love a, I love a bit of a pub quiz. So we've got a bit of LGBTQIA plus trivia here, right? <laughs> okay. And you're each going to be marked. So take this very seriously, okay? Which Olympics had the most athletes who openly identify as LGBTQ in competition? Tokyo. Tokyo ones? The most recent, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay, one, tip. Right, Bonus question for that one: How many athletes actually identified? Openly. 85. Oh, I'll say. Oh, you're not fair. I don't know. I would say around six, 60, 7. What do we got? 79. 186. Oh. Which is actually more out athletes in that Olympic Games compared to all of the previous ones combined. Wow. Oh, okay. It's big. It's big. It's big. Which female LGBTQIA tennis star made history by defeating Bobby Riggs in the iconic Battle of the Sexes oh, yeah. match in 1973? Billie, 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 Billie Jean King. King. Yes. Okay, we all know. Okay, tick. <laughs> Okay, I feel like, Joe, you have to be able to get this one. Oh, the, no pressure. the pressure is on no you. No pressure. What are the Stonewall FC team colours? Pink, white and blue. 
I'm assuming you know. <laughs> That's the, the colour of the jersey anyway, we saw earlier. Okay. Who was the only out athlete at the Tokyo Olympics to take home more than one medal? It's a sport where you can win more than one medal. Tom Daly. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see these eyes. Oh, I, mean, no. I didn't write these questions, okay? <laughs> okay, true or false? Billie Jean King founded the Women's Sport Foundation. True. 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 Well done. I feel like we all learned a lot. Mostly about you, but. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyway, I feel like me and Leisha are going to go off and have a little bit of physio now. So I'll see you back in the locker room in a bit, but yeah. we're going to head off. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Leisha, <laughs> thank you for joining me. I mean, this is quite a unique scenario to be having a conversation, but you also have quite a unique perspective. <laughs> what has your experience been like in the locker room? I would say generally my experience in the locker room has been pretty welcoming in the women's basketball space. I'm super grateful because I think it is one of the most like progressive spaces, one of the most like queer spaces in sports, one of the spaces with the most black women in it. And playing a decade, I've seen quite a bit of change uh, in the women's basketball space. And I would say overall, I've had a pretty great experience. I've been pretty lucky in terms of the teammates and the people I've had, I've been pretty supportive. You know, growing up, I was probably one of the very few openly gay uh, men in the sport so it, it does feel like it, it singles you out a little bit so you almost feel a bit awkward sometimes in the locker room scenario mm. but it also seems like we see more openly LGBTQIA plus athletes in women's sports like why do you think that is? I think women are given um, a little more space with their gender to be um, you know, tomboys, like you think about the term, like there's no such thing as like a tom girl, right? Mm -hmm. Like little boys don't get to grow up and be tom girls. They don't I was get a tom girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. But like all of those kind of stereotypes, I think hold a lot of men back. It's hard for guys because there's not a lot of folks out. You're going to have to be one of the only. That's the scary thing about coming out in sport, I think, is that feeling of it's a huge responsibility as well yeah. because it's almost like you're thrust into being some kind of activist or advocate even if you you know you just want to be you you mm -hmm. just want to be able to exist did you, you feel that way yeah i came out because i felt like i didn't want to lie and i didn't want didn't want to be ashamed of who i was anymore because you know growing up being queer in sport you do feel a whole lot of shame even if you are supported and accepted mm -hmm. so being able to you know overcome that and just be like you know what i'm gonna be me and if you don't like it lump it i love it you've been a trailblazer in the wnba as the first openly non-binary player what was that journey like for you it was long mm -hmm. I think behind the scenes, people see like the outward journey, but they don't always see like all the journey to like self-love and self-acceptance behind the scenes. So then when I did come out to the world, so to speak, it was very like beautiful and flamboyant and like I'm here and I'm so proud. I did not expect the amount of fanfare and support that I got. It was like overwhelming in the best possible way, but it was overwhelming. There were so many like trans and non-binary fans, like people would come to games with signs and be like, I had top surgery too, like screaming when I would run through the tunnel and I was like, oh, Oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you so much for having this deeper, you know, more insightful conversation. It's been really special. So thank you. And we should go rejoin the rest of the team. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Well, it's been an honor to get to know every single one of you and I've taken so much away from this experience, so thank you. I wish someone would have like told my younger self if I was a teenager that I would be sitting here with an amazing ally, two other out athletes and like have a career and being like a very outspoken, vocal, gay, trans like person in the professional realm. So like it's just so cool to see like how far sports has come, how far athletes like us and allies who like had our back and have led in the ways that they need to lead to make Make sure we're like creating the locker rooms that we want that we want for our children exactly and for future athletes that was tell talk it's been a lot of fun lots of meaningful conversations but so much fun so thank you for watching should we get out of here yeah let's do it, let's do it. <laughs>